piece of clothing is righteousness and holiness. And God is not going, he's not telling you to do it by yourself. Because in your own power you are not capable. That's why the Bible said that as many as believed him, believed who? Believed Jesus. He has given them the power to become the children of God. God is releasing new power. He's going to give you power to live for him. He's going to give you new power to live in the power of Jesus Christ. The same power that Paul, you know Apostle Paul, he was, he was called Saul. He was called Saul. The, he, on the way to Damascus to kill the apostles, the, he met Jesus on the way. And the power of God hit him. And the power of God changed him. That power that changed Apostle Paul is coming to us in these days in Jesus' name. That power that changed the woman who was, who, who, who was a, a harlot. She, she had five husbands. When she met Jesus on the well, the power of change, the power of transformation fell upon her and she became an evangelist and she began to talk about the goodness of the Lord. That same power is being released in these days upon our lives. Mugenda kwe sanga, you are going to find yourself declaring the word of God. You are going to find yourself preaching. You are going to find yourself bringing people to Jesus. You are going to find yourself living for Jesus. You are going to get a fire for holiness and righteousness in Jesus' name. He's not doing a new thing only in financial and our spiritual work. He's doing a new thing even in our families. He's restoring families. In, with, the, with the false prophets, they hate families. When they see a man and a wife that love each other, they say, ah, ah, that's not your wife. That's not your husband. But God is bringing a new revival where we are going to have strong families in Jesus' name. Remember, strong families make strong churches. Strong churches build strong communities. Strong communities build strong cities. Strong cities build great nations. Great nations build a great world. Amen. The new thing is God is doing. It's going to affect even your family life. It's going to affect your finances. It's going to affect your spiritual life. It's going to affect your family. I am praying that God will bring a new love between the husband and the wife in Jesus' name. I'm praying for a restoration, a restoration for marriages that had broken in the name of Jesus. Pastor likes this thing that God is going to bless you. You will have your car. You put in your beautiful children. You wear your nice clothes. You come to church. You go to the beach. You have fun. You go to everywhere. That's what God is going to do to the church in Jesus' name. That's the new thing God is doing. We are tired of broken homes. We are praying against the devil, against bringing brokenness in homes. Nangirida, I declare in the name of Jesus, if your marriage has been distorted, if your family has been distorted, if the devil has come and he has attacked your home, I declare restoration in the name of Jesus. Let the new thing start in your marriage in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you know that the way to start this thing, when you go back home, if you left and you didn't greet your husband or the wife didn't greet, eh? how is it? Because the husband also can greet. Nobody said the, hus the wife is the first one to greet. Eh? Today, if I'm the first one to greet you, you be the first one to greet me tomorrow. So if you came today and you did not even say hello to your mate, go back home and just give him a hug. God is doing a new thing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! This revival is going to touch our finances. It's going to touch our walk with Jesus. It's going to touch our homes in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. 
That's why we are telling people to get married. Those who are living in sin, you are living a woman and she, you never got married to her. You are living with a man and they are not lawfully yours. That's why we are going there. It's not because of we want to show that we have money. It's not because we are buying them. Actually, we don't get anything, but we just invest in money. Because God has told us he's bringing a revival in the family. No more broken marriages in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. God. That's what God is doing. In the years past, we've had, we have joined people in marriage just to hear after three days that, that the husband does not like. I don't like her anymore. After three years, fire indeed. Hallelujah. God is bringing back that fear and that commitment that makes a difference in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Put up your hand and say, I am ready for the new thing. I am ready for the new thing. I am ready for the new thing. He says, behold, I'll do a new thing. I will, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? This new thing God is doing, it is not a mystery. It is not hidden. You don't have to go to Rome to see the new thing. You don't have to go to Mecca to experience the new thing. It is already here in Jesus' name. That's why you see that in every church, People are coming to Jesus and they are spending nights in the church praying and getting ready, shaking off yesterday, shaking off the pain, shaking off the shame, shaking off whatever is hindering them because the new thing has already started that God is doing in our country. And the new thing God is doing is revival. No more shall you be called the forsaken. No more shall people say, where is your God? No more shall people say, prove that Jesus heals. No more shall people say, prove that Jesus rose from the dead. Every day as you walk, is going to be a daily proof that Jesus rose from the dead and that he's sitting by the right hand of the Father. Every day, that's what God, God is going to do. He says, it has already sprung up. Here at Christian Life Church, we have seen it. It has already sprung up. People are turning from witchcraft. People are throwing away their witchcraft and they are turning to Jesus. Marriages are being restored in the name of Jesus. People are spending nights in the church. That's why we declare that this whole week, starting Monday, we are going to still continue with the prayer and the fasting. Being in the presence of God, seeking God. Make a commitment to seek God because God is ready. God is like in Agamba. I am here, my children. I know you've been stuck. I know you've been bound. I know you've been suffering, but I'm here. Look at me. I am doing a new thing. All you have to do is to change your focus. Stop looking at your impossibilities. When you look at your life, do you see possibilities or you see impossibilities? I don't care if the situation has been happening for 10 years, has been happening for 20 years, has been happening for 40 years. From the foundations of the world, nobody had ever come back from the grave. But Jesus, he died on the cross. And he broke the record. Something that was considered impossible. Jesus did it. He died. After three days, he rose from the grave. That impossible situation. That what looks impossible in your life. Jesus is going to break it into pieces. In the name of Jesus. Change your focus. Here in P5, if you have been missing out. On coming in P5, every day in P5, God is giving us new and more strategies on how to go all the way in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor you are not going to be stuck in Babylon. You are not going to be stuck hearing their prayers. 
You are not going to be stuck looking at them sacrificing to their gods. Jesus is doing a new thing. If you believe it, clap your hands. So if you are writing, I told you point number one, change your focus. Stop looking behind. Write that. Change your focus. Stop looking behind. And write Philippians chapter number three, verse number 12. Number two, clarify your focus. Clarify your focus. Discover what God wants for you. What he wants to do for you. Do you see possibilities or problems?